The Generation 1 Pokémon games are no strangers to glitches. I mean, hell, you can beat Pokémon Yellow in a little over a minute. But one particular Gen 1 bug always catches my eye because it's so relatively innocuous, yet it causes such massive problems. Just one line of code is the difference between a critical in-battle function working properly and it completely falling apart. Of course, I'm talking about the Gen 1 miss. This is a pretty infamous glitch where in the Generation 1 games, if you select a 100% accurate move in battle, there's still a 1 in 256 chance that it'll miss. I've even talked about the Gen 1 miss on this channel before, but what you might not know is that these are not the only Pokemon games that have this problem. There's another version of the Gen 1 miss that's even weirder, even stupider, even rarer, and results in some incredibly unlucky Pokemon clips. How deep does this rabbit hole go? Surely they fix this issue by the Generation 2 games in Pokemon Stadium, right? Well, folks, this is the story of Pokemon's 1 in 65,000 mischance. In Pokemon, every move has an accuracy rating. Like, Flamethrower has a rating of 100 and is thus 100% accurate under normal conditions. You're only supposed to miss Flamethrower if your opponent has raised their evasiveness with something like Double Team, or if they've used Sand Attack or something to lower your accuracy. Cut, however, has an accuracy of 95, meaning even if neither of those prior situations has happened, you should still miss the move 5% of the time. In Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, the data structure for these moves stores their accuracy as a one-byte integer. One byte is a binary number composed of eight bits, or eight ones or zeros. If all eight bits in this byte are set to one, the byte stores a value of 255, which is the maximum value for this number. Now, every time you select a move in battle, the game makes an RNG call, or random number generator call, to generate a random one byte number. After all, if your move is inaccurate, the game needs to somehow generate a random number to decide if it should hit or not. But even if your move is 100% accurate, the game still does generate this random byte. To determine if your move should hit or not, the game runs a comparison between the random byte and your move's stored accuracy byte. If the random number is ever greater than or equal to your move's accuracy, the move misses. This means that even if you choose Flamethrower, a move with 100% accuracy and a stored value of 255, if the random byte is also rolled to be the maximum of 255, then the numbers are equal and the move misses. Since the byte has a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 255, this effectively means that all 100% accurate moves in generation one still have a 1 in 256 chance to miss. But funnily enough, this also means that moves that are inaccurate, like cut, actually have a slightly larger chance to miss than you think, because they have whatever their chance to miss is, so for cut 5%, plus the percent chance of Gen 1 missing. So cut actually has a miss rate of 5.4%, not 5%. Now that you fully understand the Gen 1 miss, let's talk about Pokemon Stadium. Having trouble finding good, filling foods that aid in maintaining a healthy lifestyle while still being delicious and convenient? Introducing today's sponsor, Factor. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are delivered right to your doorstep, cater to many different dietary restrictions, and are a great solution for anyone looking to add some chef crafted, dietitian approved meals to their weekly menu. If your goal is health, wellness, or working out, Factor's over 100 rotating weekly options include many protein packed and nutrition dense meals to support muscle repair and recovery. This is to say nothing of the fact that the food is genuinely delicious. I've used Factor many times now, and I'm always pleasantly surprised how good the meals are. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code ADEFFB50 to get 50% off your first Factor box plus free breakfast for one year. That's code ADEFFB50 at factor75.com to get 50% off plus free breakfast for one year. In the truly original release of Pokemon Stadium, which was a Japan-only game that had a limited roster of Pokemon, the Gen 1 miss is still in the code. If you select a 100% accurate move like Earthquake, for example, you still miss with odds of 1 in 256. It's already pretty weird that they didn't fix the Gen 1 miss when porting the battle system over to the N64, but that game was pretty rushed, so I guess it makes sense, and it was only released in Japan. But this, my friends, is where the weirdness truly begins. When Pokemon Stadium finally saw a release in the West with what was technically Pokemon Stadium 2, but is still called Pokemon Stadium, so I'm just gonna call it Pokemon Stadium from here on out, even though, yes, technically it is a sequel to the game from Japan. Anyway, when Pokemon Stadium was released in the West, it appeared as though the Gen 1 miss was fixed. The team behind Pokemon Stadium took a look at the Gen 1 codebase, realized the problem, and fixed it. Or did they? Go into battle pose. What's this? Oops, that's a miss. What? 
What just happened? Why did that move miss? This is the actual topic for today's video. A programming decision so weird, it genuinely boggles my mind. When altering the Generation 1 battle code, the Pokemon Stadium team did not fix the Gen 1 miss. In fact, they just made it more convoluted. Thanks to the dedicated work of the talented Pokemon Stadium decomp team, we can actually take a look at the code here and see what's going on under the hood. When you choose a move in Pokemon Stadium, the first thing the game does is make an RNG call for a random one byte integer and assign that value to an address. Before even taking into account the accuracy of the move you just selected, they compare the random value to 255. If the integer is equal to 255, which in Gen 1 would obviously mean a Gen 1 miss, they just generate a new random byte and then run the normal move accuracy check, and that new move accuracy check function still has the greater than or equal part, meaning that if you roll 255 twice in a row, your 100% accurate move misses. This means that when you choose a 100% accurate move in Pokemon Stadium, you have a 1 in 65,536 chance to miss. Why in God's name did they do this? They clearly knew about the problem because they have an if-then statement specifically for the case when the random byte is equal to 255, and if it is, they re-roll the random byte. But then they just move on and still run the comparison with a greater than or equal sign. Which begs the question, why re-roll at all? My best guess as to why it's like this is because of something I haven't mentioned yet. Some of you will already be screaming at the screen, but Pokemon Stadium wasn't developed by Game Freak. Stadium was developed by an arm of Nintendo. Maybe the Nintendo developers were poring over the code for Gen 1's battle systems, and when they saw the Gen 1 miss mistake, they thought maybe it was an intentional design decision. They probably still thought it was a bad design decision, but maybe they were reluctant to change much about Pokemon's core mechanics since it wasn't theirs. So instead, they just made it more unlikely, forcing the check to happen twice. But if they thought their change would mean that this would never happen, happen, they were very, very wrong. Cue the montage of clips of this happening to people who just happened to be recording. I would rather take what that you hit do? KO than missing the target. Miss the target. How? I Gen 1 missed. What? Okay, but surely they finally fixed this in Gen 2, right? In Generation 2, they made another very puzzling, but I guess slightly less puzzling decision. In Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, if you select a move that's 100% accurate, and you haven't had your accuracy dropped, and the opponent hasn't had their evasiveness dropped, then the accuracy check is bypassed altogether. But a form of the Gen 1 miss does still exist in Generation 2. When you select a move that has a secondary effect, like Bite, which has a 30% chance to flinch the opponent, after determining if the move should hit, the game then needs to run a second random number check to determine if the secondary effect should actually occur. It is here, in the secondary effect calculation, that the Gen 1 miss still exists. It's obviously most prominent, just like in Gen 1, for effects that should be 100%. They actually have a 1 in 256 chance to fail. So a move like Zap Cannon, which has a 100% secondary effect chance to paralyze the opponent, actually has a 1 in 256 chance not to. Note that this does not apply to moves like Growl or Thunder Wave, where the stat change or status effect is the primary and only effect. That's accounted for in the normal hit chance code. This chance for secondary effects to sometimes miss is often referred to as the Gen 2 miss. Thankfully, by Generation 3, the issue was finally completely fixed. They did a complete overhaul of the battle system, and so the Gen 1 miss was forever eradicated. But I think the important takeaway here for any aspiring programmers or any people who code regularly at all, especially in the era we live in now with so much AI generated code, is to just be really diligent at reviewing the things that you write. When reviewing your work, even small, relatively innocuous seeming decisions that might not break or halt your code, like using greater than or equal to instead of just greater than, might have lasting effects that become the bane of speedrunner and challenge runner existences for years to come. But also, maybe that's kind of hilarious to you. And to be honest, it is pretty funny. Thank you so much for watching, and please consider subscribing if you enjoyed what you saw. What you see on screen right now are my top tier patrons on Patreon. You can check out my Patreon link in the description to find out how you can support the show directly, and also what benefits you can get from doing so. 
Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.